From Presque Isle Downs and Casino, home of the Bet America Sportsbook, more sports and Les Levine, a special on the road edition. Hello, everybody. Welcome to More Sports and Les Levine, the weekend winners edition. I'm Dave Bacon from Presque Isle Downs and Casino, and it is a jam packed show. We'll talk some bowl games, we'll talk some Buckeyes, and of course, the Browns getting ready to face the Ravens. You might remember uh, back in week four, the Browns beat the Ravens by a significant margin. Since that time, Browns have struggled and the Ravens have reeled off 10 straight wins and are trying to lock up the number one seed in the AFC as they head in to the playoffs in a couple of weeks. Browns getting ready to host the Ravens now and uh, the Browns have struggled. A little bit of dysfunction going on. Odell Beckham Jr. came out and said this week he wants to remain with the Cleveland Browns, is happy to be a Brown, wants to help them figure it out. The Browns just trying to figure out a way to get a win again against those Baltimore Ravens. No, I've, I've been talking to the uh, Winnipeg Blue Bombers and the Toronto Argonauts. Um, you know, a couple Canadian League teams that I'm also, you know, trying to get traded to. So it's been, you know, it's been great conversations. It's just, it's done. It's old. You know, like I'm not going anywhere. Uh, I, I'll be here. We're gonna figure this thing out. Um, it, it's just too special to leave. So <laughs> the Steelers, I heard that Jarvis wanted to go to the, the Cardinals and all these people. It's just, it's just easy to talk about. It's like an easy, it's a cop out. I feel like it's an easy thing to do and cause a little controversy and a little friction. And I feel like in my experiences in the league and, you know, kind of going through the troubles that I did, I can now see how those those stories, you know, like for me, it'll never bother. It's never going to affect me. But then it's like, does it cause a little friction between you and a teammate who doesn't necessarily know what it is you're thinking? So it's just done. It's time to just put it to bed. Like, I'm going to be here. There's nothing more to talk about. Unless I, like I said, unless I go to the, the Argonauts or the, the Blue Bombers. So when you say you're going to be here, you're going to be here next season? Yeah, we're going to be here. We're going to do it again, and we're going to be, you know, what, what we felt like we should have been and correct all the little, you know, mistakes and all the, if we would have did this games, you know, and it, it's just too good. You know, I didn't, I didn't buy a house here to, to sell it, you know. I know people have said, you know, I didn't, I didn't sign them to trade them before, but I didn't really buy a house here to, to up, up and leave it and do renovations on a house and build a dog house and yeah. It, so. it might come, come get me, can be construed as, you know, you're just, you're, you're talking trash, you're, you yeah. know, challenging your opponent, whatever. Yeah. Is that what that is? I mean, yeah, can, I mean you, can you set the record? I, I need, like, the audio from from where I, that was said. You know, you see LeBron talking to somebody after the game, and they're talking like this, and all of that, and it's like, is LeBron saying, oh, we should team up, or is this, this is a brotherhood. You know, these are guys that you were friends with in the offseason. These are guys that... You know, you know all around the league, so it's like you can't have a conversation after the game without everyone being in your business. That's why we do this. We don't want you to know what we're talking about, good, bad, or, or nothing at all. We just don't want you sitting there, you know, trying to listen and uh, make up things. So whenever they find the, the, and I definitely for sure ain't going to the Steelers. That would never happen, um, for sure. Um, I seen they were talking about returns to New York and all this other stuff. I don't know where people are getting this from, so. <laughs> Definitely not going back there either. So it, it, it is what it is. I'll be right here. Hey, you talk about hot to opponents so like when you're out when you're out there warming up or whatever is that? Get, yeah, this is up a bit? this is um this is a brotherhood. You know, the, these are people compete at the end of the game. It's a good game. It's number love. I don't think there's too many people in the league who really have bad blood or hate uh, between teammates. Uh, you know, we we we're part of the one percent club. So um, it's a lot more respect than. People could imagine. How to win games? You know, uh, I, I look. I, I see that everyone is pointing fingers. Or is it this? Is it that? And it's it's everybody. It's me included. It's it's every single person on this team who's at fault for why we're six and eight. You know what I mean? I haven't been able to play to the best of my ability. We haven't put the games together to, to come out with wins, so it's on everybody. There's no one specific person. There's no there's no nothing. Like, we just got to do better. When we talked to Kareem on Monday, he said he didn't see 110% effort from everybody throughout every play in Arizona. Um, did 
you feel the same way? And kind of how do you take those comments? Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I've re I didn't really watch the film in that detail. Kind of just moved on to um, to the Ravens. But, I mean, we didn't win the game, so that falls on all of us. It's not just certain people. You haven't sensed that for being a problem, though, throughout the year? No, nah, I'm not. I don't think I'm, – I'm not sure about that. I think we just – this wasn't our best game. It wasn't our day. Was the fourth quarter particularly frustrating for you and everything, touching the ball just one time? Man, you know what I'm going to say, man. It's whatever they need me to do. What, what's the key to a big run? When you have those big explosive runs that go over, you know, 20, 25, 30 yards, et cetera. What makes that happen? It starts up front with the other line. Maybe making good blocks, open it up for me. How important is it for everybody in this team to stick together and to, to, to give everything they have these last two weeks? And those, those playoff chances aren't what you guys hoped they would be. Yeah, I mean, to, to say we're eliminated, we still have a chance. And that's the, that's the whole message for going forward. Just, I mean, we, we need help from other guys too, but if we can just take care of what we need to take care of, take care of it, and hopefully everything will fall into place for us. So, so I mean, our, our mind's still right. We're still trying to get better, still trying to win these last two games and see where we're at at the end. So that's the Browns part of the story. Ravens have plenty to play for. They're trying to wrap up the number one seed in the AFC playoffs. We're going to take a quick time out. When we return, we'll hear from some of the Baltimore Ravens. More sports and Les Levine, the weekend winner's edition from Presque Isle, Downs and Casino in Erie, PA. Stay with us. Ring in the new year at Presque Isle Downs and Casino. Countdown to 2020 with fun giveaways and big winning. Then at 10 p.m., Churchill's Bourbon and Brew will be rocking with Erie's Big Three, featuring the M80's Tito Bongiorno, Geek Army's Terry Wood, and Earthquaker's Marty Cole with the Geek Army Band playing everyone's favorites. Tickets available at the door or at TicketWeb.com. Plus, at 9 p.m., we've got our free New Year's Eve dance party downstairs and a special buffet. Presque Isle Downs and Casino, winning any way you look at it. Welcome back to more sports and Les Levine, the weekend winner's edition. I'm Dave Bacon here from Presque Isle Downs and Casino in Erie, Pennsylvania, the Bet America sports book. Mentioned before the break, Brown's getting ready to host the Baltimore Ravens Sunday over at First Energy Stadium. Now, the Browns are the last team that beat the Ravens back in week four. Since that time, Baltimore has run off 10 straight wins. They have 12, count them 12 players who have been selected to play in the Pro Bowl this year. Their quarterback, Lamar Jackson, one of the leading candidates to be the NFL's MVP this year, he's very much motivated by that week four loss to the Browns. Um, any loss would um, annoy me or bother me, so it definitely did. Um, that was the last loss we had, so, you know, we, we definitely want to come in and um, get a victim. You know, we, we know we, um, they, they want to sweep us, we the Ravens, and, you know, we're having so much success this year. And, you know, that's what everybody want to do, you know, beat us, and you just got to go in Cleveland and have a good game. Lamar, uh, I know you're not about individual awards, but still going to the Pro Bowl, being elected to go to the Pro Bowl. Yeah, you know? no, I'm, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, uh, huge accomplishment, um, but you know it's a team award at the end of the day because you can't get individualized with your team. You know, working so hard and we having so much success, and we had a great, great group of numbers. You know, of guys in the um, Pro Bowl, it's, it's amazing. Lamar, winning uh, player of the week by week and and also making a Pro Bowl i'm not even gonna put that in my head what you just said <laughs> that's not you know that's the, the biggest goal that's what everyone um play the game for you know we everyone want to get to the big dance and we having such a great year you know it that that's what we got to get to like ain't no if fans buts about it that's you know the goal ever since you know otas camp like we trying to get to that super bowl so i'm not gonna put anything else in my mind about not going to Mar, I know you've addressed this before, but what does Mark Ingram mean to this team and to you having him as a support in the backfield there? He means a lot to us. You know, he's the heart of the team to me. You know, um, each and every game, each and every practice, you know, each and every day, you know, it's just Mark. And what you guys see on TV is what you get, like, throughout the days, like, behind the scenes. You know, that's Mark, and we love it. You know, he, he helps us out a lot, you know, a lot. He, he brings the groove to the team, the excitement. Lamar, you've been so efficient in the red zone passing the ball. I mean, a lot of plays have passing touchdowns this year. But, uh, just what do you see when you get down there when the windows get tighter, the decisions you have to make a lot quicker? What's going through your head? 
Uh, get in the end zone. You know, find a way to get in the end zone. Don't don't take no sacks. Don't force nothing. You know, if it's not there, don't try to force it. Um, Cause we got a great kicker. So, you know, just keep it close. But I'm, I'm trying to score each and every time we down. Uh, you know, we had we didn't really have a lot of success in my la um, my rookie season in the red zone. You know, we'll drive the ball down the field and get stopped, stuff like that. Having Tuck come out and kick a lot of field goals. But this year, you know, we emphasize that a lot going into the season. Like we want to be 100% in the red zone. I don't think we are, but. We, we, you know, pretty good, like you were saying, but we just got to keep it going. Do you think your, your arm angle helps, uh, especially in a tight, tight area like that? Uh, that's, my linemen help. <laughs> you know, not that arm angles. Uh, they do a great job of sustaining their blocks. Um, people just find a way to get open, and we just make it happen. Mark? Yeah, I mean, we will look at the tape in terms of uh, just getting ready for this game, so uh, that's how we do it. Talk about the problems Nick Chuck presents to the defense. Right, uh, well... You know, both their backs the way they use them, obviously. Uh, I think they've done a really good job with Kareem Hunt and Nick both together. Nick uh, hurt us badly in the first game, you know, and uh, I think it's just they do a good job of blocking, they do a good job of scheming up the run game, but also he's really special. I mean, he's really fast. He's really big. And he's ex he can accelerate with the best of them. He's a tackle breaker. He's got good one-cut ability laterally to make a guy miss, and he can lower his pads. So I, th I really do believe he's one of the best backs in football. I think uh, uh, you know, Kareem Hunt compliments him really well. Very talented. He's another starting level back. Uh, they're a little different in their style, and they use him accordingly. So uh, we'll have to have uh, all hands on deck to stop those two guys. A bunch of big run stoppers in the middle of the two big guys. Do um, you think they've played this year? Were you surprised that none of those guys made the Pro Bowl? They had a number of guys on the team. But still. Right. Well, I think Michael made it as a first alternate maybe, and uh, I think they were both alternates, weren't they? Okay, they're in that range. Um, I, I don't know. You know, I, I never get surprised, really. You know, it's it seems like there's always who didn't make it. You know, there's always a concern. I, I would have voted for him, you know, if you're allowed to vote for your own guys. I don't think you are allowed to vote for your own guys, are you? Because, you know, it's not like voting for a president or something. But, um, yeah, I'd have voted for him. John, uh, this year, you You've always been very good on the road, but this year it's exceptionally well on the road. Is it more than just having a real to have success on the road? Is it more than just having a really good team to, to play on the road, or does it go beyond that? Well, it goes it goes to how you play on the road. You know, I mean, so all that goes into it. But the bottom line is how you play. So there's a lot of factors that go into how you play. Uh, how good you are is a big part of that for sure. But yes, it's more than that. You know, you've got to go out and actually do it. You've got to play winning football and. You know, the old adage about packing your defense and special teams and ball security and all those things in the run game are really important. And we've done that so far, and uh, we have to do it again this week. Two receivers like um, Landry and Beckham, two guys who are game breakers. How tough is it to match up when you have two guys who can, can, can break open a game with their talent? Well, it is tough because, uh, you know, they both bring different things to the table. It's not just them. As Mike was saying, it's you got two running backs that can do it. They have vertical threats at tight end as well. Uh, and they got a couple of good young receivers. So... And those tight ends can run seam routes. They got us with a seam route last, last uh, game uh, when we, when we uh, didn't play a coverage the right way. Uh, uh, they get those guys on over routes. They can single them up outside. Uh, they can put um, 80 in there anywhere they want. I mean, he, he's, he's just a tough route runner, contested catch guy, heck of a block or two. Both of those guys can throw. So those are all the problems that all those guys present that we're going to have to deal with. Now, I do think we're uniquely um, situated to deal with them. You know, because we've got some guys that can really cover and can play. And we're going to match them up, and it's going to be our guys against their guys. Man and zone coverage. And see how we do. Browns and Ravens getting ready to kick it off Sunday at 1 o'clock over at First Energy Stadium. Ravens are 10-point favorites. And a quick fact here, the Ravens are 35-0 and in their history when they are double-digit favorites. Uh, not a good sign for the Browns. Time for us to take a quick time out. On the other side of break, we'll hear from Ryan Day. Buckeyes getting ready for the CFP semifinal game against Clemson. More sports and Les Levine. The weekend winner's edition will be right back. Get your basement ready for the holidays. We had a horrible storm that flooded our basement. We had to take out that nasty moldy carpet. And we never want to have to go through that again. That's when we called Nature Stone. 
And with Russell's promise, our true unconditional warranty, you will never have to replace your basement flooring again. For a limited time, get Nature Stone installed now and pay nothing until next year. Payments as low as $99 a month. No interest, no down payment. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. From Presque Isle Downs and Casino, the Bet America Sportsbook in Erie, Pennsylvania. Welcome back to More Sports and Less Levine, the weekend winner's edition. I'm Dave Bacon. Time to shift our focus now to college football. The Ohio State Buckeyes, Ryan Day in his first year as head football coach, uh, did a great job on National Letter of Signing Day. Uh, this week he found out his Buckeyes first recruiting class ranked third in the country. Of course, Day a little preoccupied as his Buckeyes getting ready for a big game against the Clemson Tigers in the CFP semifinal game. Day talked a little bit about recruiting and what his message would be to his Ohio State Buckeyes as they get ready to face the Clemson Tigers. Um, obviously proud of what we've done, proud of what the staff's done. You know, we're going to, we'll get together Wednesday and, and uh, you know, have signing day there and, and, you know, enjoy a little time right there. And, and I think that'll be fun. But but we still have a lot of work to do because this game's on you right now. I mean, there's no time to sit back and think where in the past there was, there was another week where you could prepare for this game. And, um, you know, I have not played in this game before, but talking to the other coaches who have, I mean, this, this game is, is a rushed more than it ever has been. And so, uh, you know, again, it's, it's all about how do we utilize these days and each day getting ready for this game. We'll ask you in a month. Okay. Gotta go. So Ohio State has eight national championships and probably twice as many teams that came one win short. And a half of, you know, maybe a handful of those teams were maybe one game away from not just being champions, but like a legendary team. And then they just, they lost a game, they just kind of another team. I wonder if that's something that you incorporate into your message with these guys. Yeah, it, it will be. We haven't talked about that part of it because uh, we hadn't been to this point yet, and we didn't want to get ourselves or too too far ahead of ourselves. But but that is going to be part of the message, though that that if you want to be known as one of the best of all time and, and be up there with the national champs, um, and you want to be in rare air, here we go. You know, this is the push right here, and so uh, yeah, that will be part of the message. Um, not that that really matters with our day to day operation. We're not going to be trying any harder or anything else like that. But we just got to do a great job of focusing you know, day in and day out and maximizing each day the best we can. So. Uh, we're better prepared on the 28th. Uh, second row middle, Bruce. Uh, will you, is Al Washington under contract? If he is, will you allow him to go uh, to BC for a defensive coordinator position if he wants to? I mean, if that's something that he would want to do, I'd be, I'd be very, very surprised um, and be shocked, to be honest with you. But if that's what he wanted to do, then you know, I would support him. But uh, I, don't, I don't see that happening at all. Uh, you were at the Heisman, Hertz, Burrow, Fields, all transfer QBs. We've chatted before about this new world you're in, but man, I mean, that's like confirmation of the new world. But how do you keep a four or a five star happy when they can look and they see three of the four guys there found a better situation? I think it just goes to show you what's what you know the the temperature of uh, you know quarterback play is right now in college football, and I think especially when you look at our situation, you know. You had Dwayne, you had Joe, and now you have Justin. It's just amazing to think that those have been really the three quarterbacks that have been in that room over the last, you know, two to three years. It's just amazing, and uh, I'm so happy that it worked out for Joe. You couldn't happier happen to a better person or a better family, and just awesome to see. But, but yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things. I think you just have to deal with on a, on a year to year basis and try to figure out the best way to you know manage your team and. And it's not easy. You know, you like to have four quarterbacks. It's almost impossible not to have four quarterbacks on your roster that are on scholarship because they all want to play right now. And, um, you know, the great thing about coming to Ohio State is you know you're going to get developed at a high level. And, you know, the hard thing about that is, you know, as you develop these guys, they, you know, they, if they can't play at Ohio State, they feel like they can play somewhere else. And so then they go on and possibly try to play somewhere else. And so that's, that's frustrating. But at the same time, like you said, that's kind of the way it is now. And we don't like that. We want guys to be here and stay here and, and – um, be here throughout their whole careers, but um, at the same time, I'm also uh, understanding of you know what people want to do, and um, so we'll just keep adjusting as time goes on. 
The Buckeyes will be in action in about 10 days, but bowl season has kicked off already. Uh, we're going to take a quick time out, and we will look at a couple of Mid-American Conference teams who are in action early in bowl season. More sports and less living. The weekend winner's edition will be right back. As a kid growing up, my dream was to go to college, play baseball, and get a degree. Coming out of high school, I had two choices. I was accepted into a four-year university, but I decided to come to Tri-C after receiving a scholarship. I got my associate's degree at Tri-C. They transferred all my credits straight into Baldwin-Wallace, so I started at Baldwin-Wallace University as a junior. My name is Tyler Leonard, and I earned my first degree at Tri-C. Welcome back to more sports and Les Levine, the weekend winner's edition. I'm Dave Bacon from Presque Isle Downs and Casino, the Bet America Sportsbook here in Erie, Pennsylvania. Seven Mid-American Conference teams will play in bowl games this year. Miami won the MAC championship. Uh, they have to wait till a little bit later in January to play, but the team they defeated, Central Michigan, will be in action much earlier. The Chippewas were picked to finish last in the MAC, and they ended up bowl eligible and facing San Diego State in the New Mexico Bowl. San Diego State uh, heads into the game a three and a half point favorite on the Bet America line here at the Bet America Sportsbook, Presque Isle Downs and Casino, over under 40 and a half. And a couple of interesting notes. The San Diego State defense, last six games, no team has scored more than 17 points against that Aztec defense. A Couple of guys to keep an eye on, Quinton Dormady, uh, transferred because Coach McElwain gave him a chance. He was at Tennessee and Houston before coming to Central Michigan. And Jonathan Ward has 10 rushing touchdowns in the last six games for the Chippewas. In a little over an hour, the Tropical Smoothie Cafe Frisco Bowl. Gotta love the name. Kent State taking on Utah State. And the Aggies are six and a half point favorites. Expecting a high scoring game, 67 and a half, the over under. Three Utah State players actually have been cleared to play after being cited for possession of marijuana. That includes uh, Jordan Love starting quarterback, Gerald Bright starting running back for the Aggies. And the Golden Flashes needed to win their final three games of the year to become bowl eligible. Uh, keep an eye on the quarterback, a local guy from Midview High School for the Golden Flashes, Dustin Crum. Leads the team with over 2,300 yards passing and nearly 600 yards rushing on the season. We're going to step aside, take a quick time out. When we return, Dan Kuick, who uh, runs the sports book here, the Bet America sports book at Presque Isle Downs and Casino, he's going to show us how to use these kiosks. I, you always hear me talk about the 50 state of the art kiosks located throughout the casino. Dan Kuick, who runs the sports book, will show us exactly how to use these and how easy they are. When more sports and less Levine, the weekend winner's edition returns. National holidays expert Mary Mary here with a list of holidays you won't want to miss. Get your Ohio Lottery Merry Million Scratch-Offs for National Donut Day, National Have a Party with Your Bear Day, Pickle Day, National Unique Talent Day, Take a Hike Day, and America's favorite, National Jukebox Day. Every day is a reason to celebrate. Grab a Merry Millions and other Ohio Lottery holiday scratch-offs today. Welcome back to more sports and Les Levine, the weekend winners edition. I'm Dave Bacon here at Presque Isle Downs and Casino. Well, every week at the end of the show, you hear me talk about the 50 state of the art kiosks that the Bet America Sportsbook here has at Presque Isle. And this is one of them. And this is Dan Kuick. Dan is the director of slots, also runs the sportsbook here at Presque Isle. Dan, we appreciate the time. How successful has the sportsbook been in the early going here? Oh, the sports book's been great for us. Uh, you, you should come up on like a Saturday or Sunday when football's in full swing. This place is jamming. I've got guys that'll set up camp in front of these things. They'll pull a chair up. They're in game betting. They're placing bets for tomorrow, for next week. It's been really successful for us. Now, um, we talk about this all the time, the state of the art kiosks, 50 of them throughout the casino. They're touch screen. So run us through and, uh, and take us through just how easy it is to place a bet here. 
Okay, so it, it's super simple. When you walk up to one of these kiosks, you'll hit your sports tab, and then down this left-hand side is all the sports you want to play. Obviously, let's play some football. So we've got football here, um, and we've got NCAA selected. So let's just get to the brass tacks. We'll run straight to the 28th, the bowl games that everyone wants to see. We've got, um, let me see, where are we at? The 28th, we got the LSU in Oklahoma, which, as everybody knows, that's getting a pretty big spread on it. Um, right now, we got uh, plus 13 for uh, Oklahoma, so it's, it's going to be a rough day for those guys. And then we got Clemson and Ohio State. It's a two point. It's only two points there, so we know that's going to be a tight game. Um, but we're going to have a lot of guys coming up here watching that game, betting that. Uh, and then, of course, there's some favorites on here. We've got Penn State going to be playing. Um, it's going to be a good day of sports. It's going to be a good good week. And again, easy. It's it's like a vending machine. You feed you feed money in, and you can make your bet. Right. So you know, I come up, and I'm I'm feeling an upset. You know, I'm going to take Oklahoma. So I come up here, money line straight up, plus 340 for Oklahoma. I press that button there. Okay, my bet's placed. Let's say I want to lay 20 bucks. I put 20 dollars in, get cash. I place my 20 dollar stake there. And it even tells me what I'm going to win if I win that bet. So for twenty dollars on right now, plus three forty, I'm going to win eighty-eight bucks on that. And again, fifty of these throughout the casino. Some of them, if you want to come in, they're right at the door of the casino. You, you can place a bet, be on your, get your ticket, and be on your way. Right. So if you don't want to come in and hang out here, hang out at one of the bars. I've got some place at each door. You're on your way to work. You want to swing in, swing in. Takes you five seconds. Come in, place a bet, and you're out. If you can use an iPhone or smartphone, you can use one of these things, no problem. Have uh, how reliable have they been? How how happy with these kiosks have you been to make your life easier and and to make sports wagering that much easier and quicker? Oh, it, it, it's so user friendly. It's so accessible. Um, it's the closest thing to an online bet you can place in person. It's it's that simple. So as far as some guests are a little iffy, they're like, ah, I'm used to going to a window. Give me five minutes. Let me show you, walk you through this. I'll convert you guaranteed. All right, Dan Kuick, we appreciate the time. Thank you, Dave. Dan is the director of slots, also in charge of the sports book here at Presque Isle Downs and Casino. We're going to take a quick time out on the other side of break. Dennis and I make our picks uh, for the week. I'm catching him, and uh, I'm here at Presque Isle Downs and Casino for a little bit of luck. We'll be back with more. More sports and Les Levine, the weekend winner's edition after this timeout. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant, whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes Smiley One Heating and Cooling. Find them at SmileyOne.com. Welcome back to more sports and Les Levine, the weekend winner's edition. We have reached that time in the show where D-Man and I will make our picks. D-Man, I have come to Presque Isle, Downs and Casino to try to change my luck and, and continue the role that I started last week. Last week I was 3-1, and D-Man 1-2-1. One, and one. I am three games behind the D-Man. He's 14-9-1 on the year. I am 12-11-1. And D-Man, I'm going to start with the Browns. They are 10-point uh, underdogs at home to the Ravens. I don't see any way that the Ravens don't cover the 10 points. Lamar Jackson, Mark Ingram, and that Ravens defense remembers how the Browns beat them up in week four. Since that time, they've won 10 straight, and their offense has only gotten better. Browns defense continues to struggle. You saw what Kenyon Drake did. You saw what Kyler Murray did last year. It's going to be more of the same with Lamar Jackson running the football in a physical style and also Mark Ingram doing the same. I think the Ravens run all over the Browns. Let's toss it back to the D-man in studio to make his picks. D-man, what do you think of that Browns-Ravens game? Well, first of all, Dave, thank, uh, congratulations on going 3-1 and one this past week. Uh, my picks begin with the Ravens minus 10 over at the Browns. 
Uh, this isn't even going to be close. The Ravens are the number one AFC seed, and they need the game to stay there or to lock it up. Um, they have extra incentive because the Browns beat them in Baltimore in week four. Lamar Jackson is the front runner for MVP. The Ravens are relatively healthy. So the Browns are going to get the full throttle Ravens and the Browns, as we saw, are dysfunctional and just going through the motions. They're six and eight now coming off a terrible loss uh, against the Cardinals in Arizona. So I see the Ravens winning this one easily. I think my pick for the plane dealer in Cleveland.com is 40 to nine. Uh, next pick for me is the Denver Broncos at home laying seven against the Detroit Lions. Yes, I understand the Broncos lost uh, in week 15. They got handled, but it was by the Chiefs in Arrowhead. Uh, to that point, the Broncos have been playing reasonably well with Drew Locke, and I expect them to rebound at home. And you also have the opponent, Detroit, going nowhere and having to leave climate control conditions to come out and, and play outdoors in Denver in December. So it, it's a favorable matchup for the Broncos to win comfortably. My next game, I'm going to take the Falcons minus seven uh, against the Jaguars. The Falcons are coming off of <laughs> an improbable victory in Santa Clara over the San Francisco 49ers. I'm not sure how they did it, but they did it. They come home. They're, they're not going to the playoffs, but I think they'll be at home coming off of that stirring victory. I find it hard to believe they're going to stumble against the bad Jaguars. Recognizing, though, that the Jaguars themselves went out west in week 15 and rallied to beat the Oakland Raiders. Uh, so I guess there's some fight left in the in the terrible Jaguars, but I uh, plan on the Falcons and Matt Ryan uh, winning by at least double digits in that one. And then my final game is a pick 'em. Give me the home Dolphins over the Bengals. Uh, you know I'm not bullish on the Dolphins, but I am certainly not bullish on the Bengals. Two terrible teams. I will say this, I was impressed by the fight that Miami showed against the Browns when they were in Cleveland a few weeks ago uh, with Brian Flores as the coach. So uh, I'm relying on the, the Dolphins to hold serve uh, in the battle of two terrible teams. Give me the Dolphins on a pick them over the Bengals. Those are my four plays, Dave, and, uh, you know, I hope uh, you continue your success and build off of week 15. D-Man, hard for me to argue with you. You have a three-game lead on me as we begin the week. Uh, I'm going to start with the Cowboys, two-and-a-half-point favorites on the road in Philadelphia for the NFC East championship and spot in the playoffs. It's been a mess of a season for the Cowboys. They go out and win this, get in the playoffs. They can do everything that they wanted to do still. I think the difference here is Ezekiel Elliott. I think he has a big game against the Eagles defense. I also think the Cowboys defense finds a way to give all kinds of trouble to Carson Wentz. Wentz has been up and down. The fact that it is in Philadelphia does concern me a little bit, but I think the Cowboys find a way to get it done to win the NFC East. Uh, I'm going to go to Sunday night, and I like the Chiefs. Minus six against the Bears in Chicago. Uh, the Chiefs Still have a very, very real chance of trying to get that number one seed in the AFC and, and at least get a bye. I like Patrick Mahomes. I know Chicago's defense is pretty good, but I don't think they have the answer for the Chiefs. They may slow them down, but I don't think there's any way that Chicago's offense with Menor's Mitch Trubisky can mount a serious attack uh, against Kansas City. Again, I like the Chiefs minus six in Chicago. And then Monday night, uh, the Packers plus six on the road in Minnesota. I really like the Packers getting six. Packers still very much alive in uh, the NFC race to get that number one seed. Uh, certainly uh, alive for the chance to get that first round by. I like the Packers. Aaron Rodgers 
Uh, that offense has been clicking on all cylinders. And Dalvin Cook, big weapon for the Minnesota Vikings, not going to play. So I really like the Packers getting six on the road against Minnesota. Those are my picks. I'm coming to get you, D-Man. And uh, we'll see uh, who ends up with the lead in our head-to-head -head picks. Again, D-Man leads me by three games going into this final week. Well, that'll do it for this edition of More Sports and Less Levine, the weekend winner's edition. I want to thank the folks here at Presque Isle Downs and Casino for hosting us, uh, the Ben America Sportsbook. Again, a little over an hour away from downtown Cleveland. Head on out to have a big New Year's Eve bash planned as well. You can bet uh, we've shown you the uh, state-of-the-art kiosks. There's 50 of them throughout the casino. It's touchscreen betting. It's easy, it's fast, and it's just an hour away from downtown Cleveland. Uh, Les Levine will be back in the chair Monday night. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you right here on More Sports and Les Levine.